Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Arrow of Time. My name is Matt. I'm Joseph. And I am Gabe. And today we have come to the exciting second episode of Series 10 of Doctor Who, Smile. And which was, that's aptly named because I couldn't help but smile through this whole episode. What about you, Gabe? Well, speaking of episodes, Matt, this is episode 130 of the Arrow of Time. For those keeping track. Oh, do, do we still do that now? <laughs> sure, why not? I don't think that I've done that at all. You missed last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, I made well. a note of it after last week to say that. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have completely forgotten. Well, But yeah, that's what we do now. We've been doing this for 130 years, guys. Yes. Yay! 130. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers, Cheers to that. Our 130. All right. 130. And there's some halves in there too, but whatever. Mm, that's a good. Scratch. There are halves, yeah. So it's. I mean, we're at plus that, but you know, actual episodes because you know we can't we can't help but just talk about Doctor Who all the time and uh, until we don't, which was this last year. So <laughs> you know, so um, we got a a new episode. Now we're getting into the rhythm of episode after episode after episode for the next couple of weeks. And it was called Smile. Yes. Yes. So this is the second. It, I've been saying second a lot. and Every second. Every second. And I think one of the things that is important to me about this episode, um, or at, at least worth uh, looking at, is that this is an episode that is a one-of-a-kind just like the um, the first episode with a new companion, we have the second episode of like okay, this is how the doctor works, or you know, the explaining basically explaining things. The first episode is always the oh my goodness, like why is the companion here? That's that's the first episode. Like why are you here? And this one, the last one happened to be like, oh my goodness, I found this thing. And then the doctor goes, okay, after this episode, I'm going to take you on an adventure. Here's our first adventure. So we got the first one out of the way. Second episode, first adventure. Now the doctor's basically saying, this is how we run. This is how we do this. But usually for this first adventure, at least in the modern era, the doctor asks, where do you want to go? Right. So in this case, the question was future or past. That's true. But, yeah. But for several of the companions, you know, that's that second episode is the doctor saying, okay, so where to? And it's always interesting to kind of hear, you know, the answer. Yeah. It is that, or it's like very so generic, you know, future or past. I think it's been more specific in the past. Like I can't remember yeah. exactly how it always goes, but. There's yeah. usually a question, and sometimes it's very specific. Yeah. Now, the other episodes that... Because we haven't had an episode like this since uh, Rings of Akaten. That was the last time we had this episode. Does that really count, though? I, th- I mean, that, that was the first... That was like the 15th time we've seen Claire at that point. Yeah, but th- that was... Like, in that season, I think it was like, okay, now this is the Clara we're getting. You've seen Dalek Clara, and then now you've seen uh, Mary Poppins Clara, or whatever, or Governess Clara, whatever it is. Yeah. Snowman Clara, that's what it was. Okay. Now, here is the one that we're giving you. So, that's kind of how I always saw that. And then, uh, this is kind of like in the same family of. Uh, the end of the world, and after that, the Shakespeare Code. Oh, the Shakespeare Code is so good. Oh, can we talk about that instead? Huh. Shakespeare. So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, because didn't didn't she ask to go back there? Yes, yes. That was like her. That was a really weird thing too, because the doctor was like, "All right, you get." He's like, not necessarily saying, "I'm going to take you on adventures with me now." It's like, okay, you did really good at this. So you get this. A, a trip. Yeah, I'm going to give you a trip. And that's where she chooses to go. And then after that, we had uh, so fires of Pompeii with Donna, and then which was really her third episode as well. 
Was that yeah. her choice, though? I don't remember that. I don't remember. I, th- I feel like they just kind of ended up, it started with them being there, and then, or it, they just ended up there, and she was like, yay, this is a fun place to be. Um, I'm going to look it up real quick while you keep talking. And then um, after that, with Amy, we got The Beast Below, which was not her choice. That was nobody's choice. <laughs> nobody's- well, no, but how did they end up there, though? Moffat? <laughs> So I, I do remember with the Rings of Akatan, yeah, that Clara requested that. Why would you request that? Well, no. So I looked it up because <laughs> I remember I remember that question of where do you want to go, and her response was she wants to see something awesome. So the doctor picked that. Okay, I think that was also Amy's thing in Beast Below, where. I remember, like the the precursor to that was like her hanging outside of the TARDIS. So I don't know for sure that Donna requested to go yeah. to. She didn't request to go to Pompeii, but they were going to go to ancient Rome. So it does seem okay. like that's yeah, just the wrong day to show up yeah. around that area. Well, because yeah, in the, that time, because the TARDIS takes you where you need to be. Right, we seem to be skipping a certain companion. The first one, I'm talking, of course, about Susan Foreman. No, no, Rose. <laughs> Didn't Rose get the choice between future and past, and she chose future? Yes. I think that's right. Oh, okay. Although, that, although her future was way future. Yes. <laughs> How would you like to see the Earth explode? <laughs> okay. But anyway. So, yeah, this, this I feel like this specific episode locks into the sort of um, <clears throat> al- um, album or library of... Or, I don't know, whatever grouping you will of uh, episodes where the new companion goes on their first adventure with this doctor. Yes. Now, I, I really like Bill, as I mentioned last time. Yes. I think that it was a, a treat to see them interact. I think they have great chemistry. Yes. <clears throat> and there were there was some of the usual getting to know you stuff, and there was some really good insight from Bill that even I hadn't considered after watching the show for so many years. Like, for example, the police box and what it says about being there for advice or service, you know, uh, in a moment's notice. It's not, I know I'm getting the, that the wording wrong, but you know what it says. And that, yeah, that's, that's right. That's the doctor. He is like sort of like a, a good guy hero out there in his police box. He's a constable. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I didn't really <clears throat> I didn't really realize that it said that. Did the words always say that on there? Yeah. Um, I think so. Yeah. And he's he's very like aloof about who he is in this episode. Just going, I, when he tells a bill, oh just go watch movies and then um just to try to keep her safe. And then doesn't really say doesn't after all the speeches that he's given in all of his lives doesn't say oh no that, that's not why i'm here you know it's, yeah. it, it is kind of odd <clears throat> it says advice and assistance yeah. obtainable immediately yeah but it seems like he's so forthcoming about with you know the his his moral compass and when bill asks him directly like is why would you want to do this? Do you go around wanting to fix everything? He's like, no, I just happen to be around and I pop in and yeah, meddle with things. So, so, so yes, that's something that should have been pretty obvious that I've never noticed before. And I was really pleased to see her pull that out. It's very insightful on her part. And also there were some other cute little lines, like when the doctor explained what he did, I think to fix the robots and bell was like, he turned it off and back on again. Oh yeah. I love she, that. She yeah. translated the doctor speak, which I thought was great. But then at the time she was a little too dense for, for being that spot on and getting the doctor right. Then she's like, do you always do this? You're asking very almost cabbage head like questions that that's the word. Yes. Yeah, I, I felt that exact same way. From the uh, inquisitiveness of the first one, where she asked good and insightful things, to this one, where she just asked dumb questions way too much. Where, I I, I don't know that if this was a BBC, because we went over all of those trailers, 
But I don't know if it was a BBC thing or if it was a, a, a BBC America thing. But they had uh, just bits of her asking all these different crazy questions. And it looked like the doctor was getting all winded. But it was just basically all the questions that Bill asks within maybe the couple of episodes or possibly the entire season. But it's just question after question after question after question. And it just seems like it, it makes it, her look ridiculous. Well, I mean, I think all that being said, she had great moments in the episode, too. Like, I already yeah. pointed out a few. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, she's, she's a great counterpart to the Doctor because she's not afraid. She's not weak in the knees around him. Um, when they were going into the belly of the ship down below... Um, I, I also thought she was a little bit dense, though, in agreeing to like direct the doctor on the map because clearly the doctor could either memorize that or they could take a picture of it. Yeah, but she so she was a little inconsistent. Sometimes she is like brilliant. Sometimes she's kind of propish. Yeah, although uh oh uh oh she's slipping into a prop already. Well, no, but I think <laughs> I, I I mean I, I think that Pearl Mac is Pearl Mackey. Sorry is fantastic and i think that their chemistry they have kind of a natural chemistry which is good and i didn't see this in the first episode so i'm gonna chalk it up to the writer of this episode Mm. um mr frank cattrall boyce who also wrote a certain foresty one in the forest of the night i told children to not take their medication yes well he's full of bad advice yeah (laughs) And it's funny, because I read probably four or five reviews of this episode, and almost all of them said, I didn't love Smile, but wow, was it better than Enforce the Night? <laughs> so, because well, something happened in this one. Yes. Yes. It was not very clever. Well, so I was talking with Joseph about this episode. Yeah. And I, I found three C's that you, you, you were talking about the episode off. The no, air, we so. don't do that. <laughs> I think the episode lacks cohesion, clarity and consistency. So what I mean, I already kind of talked about that a little bit with bill being either kind of brilliant and spot on or being a bit dense and naive. Uh, I think also from a plot perspective, I mean, well, I think we'll talk about it more in depth, but there's some things that the doctor was saying and doing that weren't consistent. I think that in terms of like clarity, I didn't really necessarily um, get what the episode was trying to say. It seemed a little bit muddled. And then I guess cohesion and consistency are kind of the same. It just didn't, it didn't tie together. And I, I to steal one of Joseph's phrases, I think it was less than some of its parts. Yes, which I'm still trying to wrap my head around that expression. <laughs> it just means that there can be some fantastic moments, but at the end you still feel empty and sad. Oh, well, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> okay, I would say it has some great moments, but at the end of the day, it, they didn't add up to anything. They were a series of great moments surrounded by some nothingness that at the end of the day didn't drive anything home You're, this is not going to be anybody's classic episode list this is not going to be even memorable for the season this episode will not be one we talk about or bring up except maybe in reference to other terrible episodes this guy writes in the future <laughs> well i didn't think it was terrible oh, no no i'm saying he writes <laughs> other things that are terrible and yeah. we'll say this was pretty good compared to those yeah smile wasn't so bad compared to yeah i don't know Smile's a very different title than In the Forest of the Night. Well, yes. it's it's that, like, we're, they're trying to do, like, blink or breathe or, like, it's like one of those punchy one word. Yeah. It's supposed to make you think something and what, smile, you're going to die. What I thought of, um, just like, the, the, I guess the the attempt on the episode was it was kind of like Diet Moffat in a way, where um, Frank, Frankie, Frankie Boy was trying to write an episode and i I was not a fan of force of the night um i was more of a fan of this episode even though i didn't have like i didn't basically i didn't have hugely negative feelings about this episode um but 
I thought it was. Uh, I enjoyed it because it wasn't this big, crazy, bombastic thing. It was just like it reminded me of like a maybe like a classic Doctor adventure where it was just like uh, we're gonna go here and do some things and then you know there might be a twist thrown in, but like nothing's really gonna be ever that serious and if we don't do this it's it's not going to be like the end of the world or whatever it like it's just kind of like or yeah, is it you mean the extinction of humanity <laughs> well <laughs> that's extin- extinction of humanity in the future i don't care about that one <laughs> but but bill did she was very concerned when she realized wait yeah. a minute yeah it doesn't look so good for the human race was this the whole human race or just part of the human race it, it was just that's a good point matt this leads to my consistency because at some point the doctor says that He's visited many Earth colony ships. Yeah. And we've actually seen him in many stories, including one that was just basically in orbit around Earth, that were out there harboring until Earth was habitable again. Oh, yeah. The Ark in space. Yes. For our readers at home. Right. So the, the whole idea that this one colony was the last human colony, we already know is Poppycock. It's Bubkiss. Balderdash. Somebody, somebody did not do their... Doctor Who research. Well, no, but again... Though they mention it. (laughs) For consistency's sake, they said that in this episode. So... But then they go and deny it. Yeah. Yes, they seem to forget that five minutes later. Now, as I was telling Joseph off the podcast... No, we never talk about the podcast. Maybe... If I can handle these (laughs) off-the-podcast talks without me. (laughs) Maybe the Doctor was just saying this... To Bill to motivate her because you know the doctor will say things to make companions do or all people do what he wants them to do oh like saying oh this is the entire race of people and assuming that she forgot the thing he said five minutes previous or when he said this is the entire race this meant this was the entire race of people on this ship he said the extinction of humanity or the the local humanity or <laughs> Just in this, <laughs> in this couple light years span. So again, that's my point of yeah. lacking consistency. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I see. I do see your point there. Um, now, I can understand from the doctor's point of view, if he had exploded them, that would have been terrible on his conscience. Yeah. Well, also, it would probably affect the timeline as he knows it. Since, right. Yeah. Unless it was supposed to happen, in which case it wouldn't. Oh, Cause, God. Because I think that he's actually said he, he went to this colony before. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, we have this, the, the, this episode starts off in the, in the TARDIS with Bill running around asking the doctor all these things about, uh, about himself and, um, about the TARDIS and uh, especially the seats. Why are, they, why are they so far away? There's no steering wheel. There's no steering wheel. Um, and the doctor says something like, oh, you do you just uh, negotiate with the TARDIS. <laughs> it, um, I did kind of like that moment of him kind of uh, gesturing back to the TARDIS episode with the Idris one. Was oh the Doctor's wife? That's yes. what it is. Which was it was, it was kind of nice. Like he hasn't forgotten. I do like that. And of course, he uh, he also mentions that he nicked it. He nicked it. Yes, um, I and that was a fun part. Uh, of, of him actually like see, kind of like trying to impress Bill right there. Like, oh, yeah, see, I have no idea. <laughs> he also mentioned they didn't know how to drive or fly a TARDIS. So, well, so f- first of all, if he stole it, did they have money on Gallifrey? I don't know. Presumably, there's at least a order of command or like a you know, a chain you have to go through to get access to one. Yeah, you would think they'd be evolved beyond currency by that point, those time lords. But like the TARDIS is one of the single most powerful things in the universe. It was an old model. It's still pretty powerful. Or maybe that's that's all, like his story from his like <laughs> they're about to insinuate insinuate it or something like that. But no, we it, saw like, we saw him steal it. Well, no, like it, it was in a junkyard, and they said, uh, "Who would want to steal a Type 40? Oh yeah. So I mean, it could have just been something like, like okay. Um. Yeah, you stole that, Doctor. Oh, gee. Oh, darn. <laughs> so, who knows? 
Um, but I do like the whole like the the build up of of him. He's like, ah, yeah, yeah, still. And to be fair, she didn't seem impressed. Um, and then goes like, oh, well, if I steal it from you, and he's like, we'll try. <laughs> oh my god, foreshadowing. Uh oh, uh oh. There won't be there won't be a thirteenth author. It's going to be Bill. That's why she's not the companion in the next season. Oh, because she's the star, and her companion is Nardle. Nardle. I just solved it again. That's two for two. Look at that. You you stop ruining things, <laughs> Joseph. Um, well, it makes sense if she's a doctor's daughter. That's true. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> goodness. I think we found our our thread for this podcast season. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Terrible decisions, or not decisions, ideas for me. Yay. Um. So Nardle breaks in on the party. And uh, he knocks four times. Yes, he knocks four times. And then lectures the doctor about not taking the TARDIS off the world. Like, because he's very skeptical. He's like, what's going on over here? He's the Mr. Belding. And in this, <laughs> hey, 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 what is going on here? And he referred to uh, the doctor's oath. Yes, yes, he mentions oath. That, yeah, there's an oath that he promised. He shouldn't be taking the TARDIS off world. So, again, what is this oath? But he's already done it like four or five times since this season started. Well, that's the beauty. And this is one of the things that the Doctor, all incarnations of the Doctor, does is boast about, I have a time machine. I can be back the instant I left. Which they never do. Never happens that way. Never. When does that happen? It's happened like once or twice. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, it never seems to go oh, only for uh, go, to, go to plan for cheap tricks, right? Yes, <laughs> if, if I'm gonna like do a tie trick with Martha, sure, I'll be yes. back before you know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because you, you have the um, I guess it's not quite the same because we didn't see the inside of it. But like when the doctor leaves Rose at the end of Rose and then comes right back, we don't know how. Many weeks, months, years passed. He's been trying for a long time to get back to that moment. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 true. Like, ah, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Okay, uh, so they fly off. Uh, he he actually oh. he does what? Oh. No, we oh. have to we have to make fun of uh, Frankie Boy again. Oh, Frankie Boy, because this is um, I guess writer's trademark. Somebody knocking on the TARDIS. Like to get inside, or not even, but just like get the attention of someone who's inside, because he did that in the forest of the night. Forest of the night. The little kid was knocking on the TARDIS door, oh. <laughs> and the doctor was like, "What?" And then he went out there and it's like, "Oh, it's a little kid." Oh, oh yeah. What are you doing here, little kid? But similar to how the knocking startled him, but yeah. it was Nardle. Is it Nardle or Nardole? Uh, that's I think a, it's Nardal. Nardal. Oh, Nardal. I was, I was even close. Oh no, it's, it's spelled N A R D O L. So Nar- Nardole. 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 But I think it's... They don't really pronounce it Nardole. I, it's, it's British. There are a lot of things they say on this show that I don't know what they're saying for like years. <laughs> like, Nardole. I remember... Uh, what was it? Transalore. 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 Yeah, I heard that so many times. Like I have no idea what they're saying. Transalore. Until I saw it written out. Depends how much weight you have behind it when you're saying it. Nardole. Nardole. Nardole the Nardwall. Nardole. There's not a D in Nardole. N- Narwhal. Nardole. What am I saying? Anyway, <laughs> yes, we chase we chase Nardle or Nardole or n- go put the kettle Nardole, on Nardole. Yes, yes. and uh, Bill asks, "Oh, so are we just gonna be going back to the university now?" And then the doctor gives a speech about between here and the kettle is eternity, uh, eternity is. All, everything that ever happened and ever would. <laughs> to infinity like, and beyond. Basically, uh, ripping from the the Amy speech that the 11th Doctor gives. Uh, anything that ever had, ever would. Where would you like to start? The oldest question. Oh, and, and what was when the Doctor asked Bill why the future? Bill said something like, I just want to see. Yeah, she wanted to see um, if it's happy. And guess what? It's <laughs> not. I, I uh, I wrote, don't we all? Oh, and then we flash over to the actual planet, 
and with a, a worker, I guess, or a skeleton crew that we we found. Oh, ap- aptly named, um, working in the fields with a. What's the robot called? I know the. Is it? Are they all uh, Vardies? Are even the like the the little walking robots, or is it just the flying robots? Presumably, those are made out of the little robots. Oh, okay. Right. Well, Every, everything's made out of the little robots. Oh, spoilers! Sorry. Oh. Well. Anyway, I guess I'm assuming. So my understanding is, uh, the robots that we see because Bill was unimpressed with the little robots. Remember. Right. The the nanites. The robots we see are the Vardy. The the actual like the handbot. Of the okay. <laughs> so what are the nanites? <laughs> this nano- is a kindness. What are the what are the nanites? I think they're Vardy too. But so I'm, they're all they're, yeah. they're all one the same. They're just I don't know nano robots that are Vardy. Um, oh no no wait 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 so oh we have the information right now. Okay, so according to Wikipedia. The be all end all for human knowledge. Yeah, all praise Wikipedia. Uh, the nanobots are called Vardy, and the robots that we see are the avatars for the Vardy. They're called Smilers. Yes. Oh, oh, wait a second. Sorry, that's, <laughs> that's another one. So I guess they're all Vardy, but the the handbots are what we interact with. I'm, okay, I'm sorry, I keep calling them that, but they remind me of that. Um, so. Interesting thing. So we hear uh, what is presumably the sister of this girl working out in the fields. And would you say she's outstanding in her field? Oh, (laughs) hey, hey. (laughs) Because, okay. Yeah. So she has a a little bit of, um, uh, of uh, terrifiedness in her voice. And says, oh, is the robot with you? Just keep on smiling. So she's already aware of of the the trouble. So she just says, get back as soon as possible. And then proceeds to tell her sister that their mom is dead. Now, here is another thing that falls under the consistency thing. Or maybe if it could fall under another C. I don't know how many C. If there's any more. Yeah. (laughs) But... Um, it seems to me that if you just saw or were aware that if you're unhappy, then all these verdi, like a swarm of bees comes out and, and chews you up into bones and you're alarmed by this and your sister is there with a robot that mm-hmm. can do this. Maybe the first thing that you should say is not... Our mother is dead. Does seem like bad planning. And further, if she was already knew of this, it seems like she would already have been taken out anyway. So if she couldn't have called anyone in the field. She would already be dead. But we have yeah. to explain why for people who didn't watch the episode, and we're spoiling all this. It's because the robots don't like it when you're sad. So instead of making you happy, they eat you. Yes. Yeah, so everybody has to wear a little badge that yes. shows their current mood. Right. And they're in the form of more or less emoji. I like when the doctor gets the, his emoji that it's just immediately suspicious. It like from the get go, Bills is like, "Yay, this is exciting!" And then the doctor's is just like eyebrow in the air, and I don't know about all of this. That's the doctor. Yes, but yeah, I, I did enjoy that that little bit. Like it, it seemed like his never went to to happy. It was always just like eyebrow up. Only mm. when he forced it to happy. Yes. Well, yeah, when he forced it to be happy, but naturally, like, the doctor just defaulted to suspicious. Skeptical, I believe. Skeptical, yes, yeah. But, um, yeah, they they went around into the the greenery, and then... Did the, the deathery. Yeah. Yes. Then he found out. I like. I always like it when it has the, the doctor kind of exploring and, like, working things out, and, like, initially saying, like, okay, yes, but... Like when they're in the the cafeteria or whatever, and like, how come there's only one algae? They call it, and like, yeah, where where is everybody? And he mentioned something like, oh, like either he or Bill mentioned something like, oh, did, is everybody still asleep? Right, because the first time the doctor works through it, 
he decides, oh, they sent the robots ahead to build the colony and the humans are coming, which doesn't make any sense because you sure know how this turns out, but whatever. Well, no, so at least initially, he made that theory before he found the bones. So he just saw this like fully formed colony with no people. Right. And assumed that the uh, Hambots made it all. Oh, well, right. But my, my problem is deeper than that. My problem is the, the Doctor seems to have an uncanny recollection of all of human history. He should absolutely know the fate of this very early human colony. Like, he should know pretty clearly, oh, they came here. And- because this is the first one, right? So, so he said at one point, I recall, this was the first human colony. It was, like, not that far from Earth, like 20 light years or whatever. It's nothing. But then later on, he's, he seems to go on and on about how there are human colonies spreading all over the place. And then he dials it back later and says, this is like the end of humanity. If, it's, if, the, it's that consistency C again. Consistency. The C of consistency. It's almost like when you take a month to make an episode, you forgot what you wrote yesterday. <laughs> That's kind of weird. But anyway, if we, we, we can ignore just that, what he said this episode. And we can look at all of the episodes we've seen. We know of at least two other right. human type stuffs right the now. The Beast Below is one of them. At least. This appears to be the um, the Indian Space Agency's attempt. Well, the, the ship did say you got an Earth. It did say that. Which reminded me of Star Trek. Very Star Trek. And we, we also get the impression that in our future from now, that the Indian Space Agency will, will take a lead in human space flight. As we see in dinosaurs, dinosaurs on a spaceship, yeah. where they're kind of the ones who are calling the shots. Yes. Interesting. So, but anyway, you look at it. So there's a bit of con- a thread of c- consistency. It is continuity, which or is continuity. Not, which is another C, yeah. yes. but not an important C for this episode. The the doctor really should have known that just like in the water of Mars, water, water, water. Is plural. There's more than one water on Mars. He like knew the fate of every single person on that station and like how it affected all of humanity's development after that. He should know what happens to this supposed first human colony. And the fact that he's like, that's a mystery to me. Like, that's weird to me. Anyway, that would go into confusion, con- contusion, I, con- I, consistency. I agree with you. Controversy. So many C's. Yeah, so many C's. We're drowning in the C's over here. But we're not drowning in beverages. No. Mm. Does that mean that we need to take a break? I think a, a brief break may be in order. All two, right. Two B's, brief break. Well, let's go. Let's go to the break. Brief break beverage. Wait. Three B's. Cheers. 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 Joseph, look at you. Mm-hmm. Double double fist in the the booze over there. I am. Did I not did I do it wrong? Do you have cork on that one? Uh oh. What? What happened? We got some cheap scotch and it comes with cork in them. <laughs> oh. I did not notice that time, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I will drink your scotch for you if it makes you feel better. No, I can I can handle oh, it. Oh here I go. Glug 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 glug. A little a little cork never hurt anybody. <coughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> I haven't had this whiskey in a long time, and I'm sorry, podcast juice. I haven't had this <laughs> podcast juice in a long time, and it is in my insides, and it's letting me know that. As long as it stays there. As long as it stays there. Yep. All right. Well, welcome back from this break. <laughs> We're talking more about the episode "Smile." Um, all right, Smile. Smile is. Joseph and I tried to convince Matt that it was awful. It was so bad, <laughs> Matt. I thought, I thought that we weren't saying that it was terrible. I thought because I said I didn't think it was terrible. And well, like, that oh, was no. before all the scotch. No. Okay. okay, now the truth comes out. No, I still hold true that, like, ultimately, in my view, I don't think that it was terrible. Um, it was left. Yeah, so it, it wasn't like a, a, a great um, episode that's going to um, be well known or is going to be one that you'll point to to say, oh, yeah, check this out. But um, definitely not a favorite. But I did enjoy, I don't know, I just, I enjoyed it. It was like, it, it was what it was. To be quite honest, I didn't hate it. 
I'm just being difficult. Oh, you're being difficult. Oh, no, it was not. It was definitely not bad. It was. I, I didn't care enough about it to hate it. That, that, that is very <laughs> accurate. Yes. That's what it boils down to. It was. I mean, it was no uh, day of the moon or. Kill the, the moon. Or kill the moon. Kill the moon. Don't worry, though. He's writing one this season. So the kill the moon guy. Oh, kill the moon. Yeah. Did. Did he write one that was good? No. no. Okay. <laughs> That I think we can all agree on. This one was not bad. But that's its problem, is that it was not bad. We only have so many episodes in a season. That's true. We need more than not bad. And to be honest, when you take a month-ish per episode, they better all be, like, home runs. There's no excuse. To At have least spent, triples. To sp- have spent three plus weeks on that. <laughs> and not have some editor say... Huh, this page doesn't match the things he's saying on this other page over here. Maybe I should tell the writer. No, whatever. No time. Well, no, plenty of time. Uh, yes. Do it. <laughs> we only have two years to work on this. Anyway, so this this episode, um, the uh, there are bad bugs yeah. and they're gonna bite bad bad bugs. People, in the, yes. They can't keep up. So they. They run back from the, from the greenhouse <laughs> from the greenhouse, spelled H A U S. Oh, they find they find bones in the greenhouse. That's yeah, the bones. Lots of bee. So the bots made bones. The bots uh, made bones, and calcium po- flows from the the copperhead. No, I don't know um, the shower thing that it. Yes, it's it's fertilizing with calcium, which is grinding the bones. And I did not realize that calcium was a great fertilizer. It was for that particular crop. Oh, okay. Which I think the doctor pointed out. Good. But there was a lot of buildup like, oh no, what's what's in the box? And we knew it was going to be it was going to be bones. Like we, yes. we knew it was bones. Just show us the bones. We know it's bones. Stop leading us on here. This was a this was a situation where it's like we know the secret and um we're watching the doctor work it out. And then he finally gets there like, "Hey." So then he's like, "I'm going to do something about this." And runs into they they run back into the city in the heart of things and are cornered by these robots, and that's when they have to fake their their way, fake their smiley ways. Yes, fake it till they make it. They have to deep breath themselves. <gasps> oh, I'm just trying to see if if there's like a bunch of things that he's pulling from. Oh, so, there's at least one thing that we know. What's that? That has involves happiness and patrolling. Oh, the happiness patrol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The Seventh Doctor episode, yes, which has some similarities to this, just like the whole "be happy or else" oh, that's scenario. Right. <laughs> and then they play Bobby McFerrin. A doll party, but that, that was one be that we happy. We all saw that's that, copyright. That strange apartment. Not when building. I sing it. <laughs> yes, the strange I'll apartment. Copyright right and fringe it. And there was on the fringe. There were less people in this episode, but they, um, there was a similar like this, par- paranoia and yeah. This was a tight cast, actually. Yeah, this is like this episode was like a a very small uh, cast episode for most of it. For most of it, yeah, for the good majority of it. Although, like I pointed out at the end, when the angry human mob goes to take on the Vardy, they muster like eight of them. <laughs> it's right. like, okay, there's your human army of eight. Good yeah. job, guys. Um, so, uh, what happens? Oh, um, that's when we find out this is what the doctor does. He's doing the thing that he, he, uh, he always does is to help people. But, oh, one thing I, I realized is that the doctor says that this place is made out of basically optimism and it has like the the robots the little tiny robots buzzing around like a big swarm of bees following people that doesn't that's not very optimistic for me well i think he was talking about the whole idea of humans leaving earth and creating this idealistic colony yeah with it was it was a, a metaphor yeah you know, it just seems like being happy all the time, and then there's like this big kind of like cloud of like, and like mm, that'd be hard. Like, and I guess the humans 
created that, but that's got to be really difficult. Like, hey, let's create something and we'll make sure that it makes us be happy and it'll be akin to the swarming of bees. Well, it was never meant to make them be happy. It was meant to allow them to be happy. And then its programming got a little too voracious. It went TiVo. TiVo or TiVo? TiVo. Oh. TiVo famously uh, was supposed to record other, uh, not only the, th- the shows that you like, but then other shows that are like your interests, and then would go on to like other things. And so, that, yeah, it's, it's just like that, except if you didn't like the show, it murders you. Yes. Right. So That's why we don't have TiVo. <laughs> yeah. We just steal it. I mean, we oh, oh, no, borrow borrow from the internet. Well, no, so actually forever. We lease the internet now with Sling. Oh, but, oh yeah. nice. Look at that. That is true. Is that really lease or is that just it's, it's rent to own. Subscribe. There we, we subscribe go. Subscribe to the internet via Sling now. I I still do and have always um done uh Amazon subscriptions. So if you want your du- if you don't have Sling, which is a very good source, but if you don't have Sling, go to Amazon or iTunes for all your Doctor you Who needs. Use our reference links. or Google. Yes, you can get it through Google Play. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So many ways. So many or just, or Pirate Bay. No, 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 no. He meant BBC. Yes. If you're in Britain, it's the law. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, never steal kids. Um, because that would make you a kidnapper. So the oh, oh, I, oh I, I. <laughs> hey, yeah. So after discovering the peril, the doctor attempts to dump Bill back at the TARDIS. Right, but like any good companion, uh, she sneaks back upon him. Yeah, I just like she just kind of appears there. There's no like like thought going. No, I think the doctor's in trouble. I am gonna follow him. She just like. It's just like the doctor's adventure, and then all of a sudden she's there. But we also seem to have, we didn't mention that the Vardy implanted communication devices so they could communicate through their right, minds. Right, right, exactly. So as she sneaks up on the doctor, he's like, I can hear you. Yeah. Um. So she sneaks up on him. And the big thing is that they're looking at the wall, and they realize, oh, the Vardy are the wall like everything has been built into this which apparently it's like a like an art thing in um spain or something so it was actually filmed at (coughs) the city of arts and science museum in valencia spain yeah oh wow so it is this futuristic museum there was no cg except for the actual little vardy coming out of the Woodwork, yeah, plaster work, yeah. But I mean, the actual. Aside from that, that was the actual place. Valencia, Spain. Can we use your science and art museum to film a mediocre episode of our program? See, it's a cultural and architectural center in the city of Valencia, Spain. Well, there you go. So you can go visit. Go visit it. Go to film your episode there for a month and get a free vacation. It's funny, um, I saw a little video of the filming in in Spain, and apparently there was, like, massive lines of fans waiting there to meet Capaldi and... Mackie. Yes. Yeah, uh, I saw that same video. It was... I had quite a larf. I did not see it. Oh. That's all I have to say. Well, good. Because it was secret. Only the true fans can see it. (laughs) Only fans of El Adora. Anyway, um, so the so seeing the things on the wall, yeah, the doctor resolves there has to be the original seed ship that would not have yeah. these fake walls. Oh, because he he gets a, what he explains as he's running back to it before as he's leaving Pearl at the at the TARDIS, he has a childish impulse to blow it up, which I thought was humorous. I enjoyed that line. It made me happy in my in my brain. But even still, assuming that he thought a ship was on the way, he would still probably be dooming them to death if he exploded the colony. Well, I mean, at least there wouldn't be a, a big thing 
about to horribly eat them really quick. At least they'd have like a a fighting well, chance to die normally in yeah, nature. <laughs> yes. Maybe they could live a little bit more off the spaceships or I don't know, go somewhere else. I don't know. Maybe he thought be, that's, ah. con- that's consistency. Or is that the other one? I'm trying to work in my head some way that the doctor always knew the truth. And this was some giant misdirection. This is some sort of test for Bill. Or is it buffoonery? Skullduggery. Probably buffoonery, but, you know. Quackery. Um, it, se- it, it seems like, well, especially at the end of this, when he talks about um, this is what happens when, you know, you wanted to you wanted them to do this for you so you would be happy and you could, like all this technology is working for you and you don't have to do a thing. Well, you're going to have to do a thing now. Um, so I think that he was at least thinking, well, they're not going to get eaten up by all these robots, but they will have to start all over. And, you know, it's happened before civilizations have started from the ground up before. Never. Never. What? <laughs> what well, no, so, so we're skipping ahead a little bit. We so. are. I'm, I'm just trying to, like, forethink, like, I mean, yeah... So that's one of the important I'm just saying why they're not completely doomed if he blows it up. So one of the important things is he tries to blow up the ship. The yeah. Hambots realize this and one of them goes to stop him and fails and falls into the the pit. Into the pit. And he, the doctor's it's a very Star Warsy kind of area. Yeah, why are there no handrails. <laughs> yes. The doctor succeeds in overloading the reactor. Which appears to be some sort of like washing machine yes. <laughs> on, on a ledge. I don't know why that doesn't look like a reactor. And had a didn't it, you had some comment about what it said? Oh, I don't remember at this point. Something like fusion, something whatever. What it, it just looked like a thing sitting on a ledge. It had like a yeah. It had like a bank vault door opening handle. It did and yeah. some tubes. I, I, that's not a reactor. Well, so as he's getting this overloaded. Bill stumbles upon a child, and it happens to be a child that the doctor recognizes from a locket that yes. he found in the pile of bones. And when he sees this child, he realizes, oh no, they're not coming, they're already here, and goes to reverse the overload. I enjoyed that part. I was like, oh, doctor. You messed it up. Like, finally, he barely achieved what he was trying to do. He worked so hard, and and despite all of the hurdles, he got it to start to blow up and then realize, oh, no, all these people are here. Oh, crud muggets. I got to go back and undo all this stuff. Undo Which wasn't, what I did. wasn't very hard. He switched. It wasn't, yeah, it yeah, wasn't very he hard. Was right there. He switched some tubes around. The, he, the concept, though, I thought was fun. He re-reversed the polarity. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Like, there's a lot of great concepts in it. Oh, so I guess we can say that the little mm-hmm. little hand bots. Sorry, small bots. <laughs> yes, they they weren't made out of nanobots because he did knock that guy over and he fell into the pit and yeah. exploded. So, like, if it was nanobots, it wouldn't. He would just. Not have done. It's that. just the interface for the nanobots, right? So they were a part of the original ship, not the you know subsequent colony. Yeah. So people are waking up. Once the doctor explains to them what's happening, they decide to go all militia on the handbots, as as humans do. And the doctor was like, "Stop this, or I won't help you." No, no, please stop. Whatever you do, stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they said, no, we got gods. So, yeah, so that that happened. That happened. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're going to rise up. It's just one robot. And then, of course, they shoot the robot. And then it's like, oh, no. It's all around us. Like, well, we're officially screwed. And then the doctor uh, does what he calls kicking over the chessboard. I, oh, that's another thing that I really love. He's like, you know, I always win at chess. So I have a special particular move. I kick over the chessboard. I love that line. Yeah. Which is a very 12th Doctor thing. Because I think your 10th Doctor, even 11th Doctor, would go on about 
how they thought somebody moves ahead. Now this doctor's like, no, I just I get mad and kick it over. Yes. <laughs> um. So his the doctor's version of kicking over the chessboard is resetting the robots. Yes, and making them forget. Yeah. Everything that happened at that point. But the doctor also realized they'd become sentient. So once he realized they were alive and self-aware, he is now wanting to protect both of them, the humans and the robots. Yeah. And so this was a case of the the humans kind of doing themselves in because they were the ones that created this so they could have an easier life. And Skynet happened. <laughs> and then they uh, had that whole war, almost. They did. It was very mm. short. Because it didn't span three uh, movies in a TV series. But this is another one of those themes that Moffat seems to have injected. It's memory wipes. We're back to memory wipes. Now we're basically, oh, here's a burgeoning intelligence. Wipe its memory. It's yes. fine. But they were still... They, they didn't lose any of what they gained, but they just lost the recollection of why they were mad at these humans. Right. Well, so actually, and the Doctor realized they were self-aware when they sought revenge. Yeah. So that very emotional response was, he was like, oh, you hurt them, so they want to hurt you. Yeah, so now things are different. They're fighting back. But they were already murdering us. How is that different than wanting revenge? Yeah, the, uh, the Frankie boy. Frankie boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. I, I did like, though, the... That once the doctor realized they were alive, that he took a neutral position. He was like, no, I'll negotiate with you. And the humans were like, why should we negotiate? This, they, they, they belong to us. This is our world. And the doctor was like, not anymore. As far as I'm concerned, they're the indigenous species and you're the guests. Yeah. And he was like, if you want to survive, you're going to negotiate with them. Yeah, I, I like how he then started to negotiate with the... The robots and like saying, "Oh, yeah, sorry about these. You know, these humans hit me in this, and what they really need is they need us. To, they need to work with you and uh, to show you around." And it's almost like, as he was saying the words, it was almost a bit of an insult to the 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 people, the men there. But it was still like, "Got ah, gotcha. You're gonna have to do what the doctor says now." Yeah, and presumably the colony is successful since. The doctor remembers them. And I even kind of remember at the end some throwaway line of Bill about how they're going to be okay or something. I forget the exact. I was taking notes, but I was not typing very quickly. I had a long day at work that day. Yes. Then everybody lives happily ever after. Well, except all the people murdered by robots. Except them. They did not. And, and except for uh, the doctor and Bill, who did not make it back for their kettle of tea. Oh! Uh- Nope. Find they, out next week. They ended up in uh, Victorian England. Never been there before. No. Where one of um, Newt's commander's beasts is running loose on the <laughs> ice of the Thames. Oh, if only. I really <laughs> want to see some sort of like yes. tie-in between the Wizarding World and Doctor Who. So badly. So, yes. Um, again, I feel like you know, despite everything, it was it was one that I could easily watch. I guess like my bar isn't incredibly high right now for Doctor Who, which is sad. But I you know I watched it and I was like, all right. It didn't it didn't anger me, so that's that's good, right? I guess. It's just I I've finished watching T V shows where every episode was a delight. Yeah. So it's hard to go to a show where the best I can say is I'm not upset at it. You know, I was really... Okay, here's the thing. Is that I was really looking forward to this series. This you are, You're getting it from you guys. Oh, we're doing you're it. You're getting it. You're getting the, the, the sadness out. All right? I was really looking forward to, like, everything being... Because this is Moffat's last season... Or series or whatever. His swan song. His swan song. And so I was really looking forward to like this being his his big, like, every freaking... Because here's the thing. Twin Peaks, season three. Four weeks. Four weeks. David Lynch, I think, wrote and directed every single episode. Although it took him, like, 
three years, but but yeah, it just like ah, like it sounds especially like Kyle McLaughlin said that it's like it's what you remember. It's going to be a little bit more edgier, but it's what we remember, and it's just like. That is that feels even though I haven't seen it yet, so I'm just prejudging. But that feels like the way it, when you're going to leave a a TV show. That's how, like I have one more chance to do it. This is what it's going to be like. But also remember, he didn't Moffa didn't write this. Now, granted, as a showrunner, he could have whipped it into shape a little bit. Yeah. Instead of just like sitting back and saying. Good job, Frankie boy. But. I have to write more Sherlock. <laughs> Apparently, that's done though. Oh, I'm done. With I don't know. Sherlock. Maybe I think that's that's a rumor that like that the last season of Sherlock that aired was the last one. Now I'm writing the new series Moriarty. Oh, there we go. Um, but it just seems like what Moffat is doing right now. I mean, again, I didn't hate the episode. It was just like it was what it was and. It had its charm, but it was not a blow me away episode, and it de- definitely felt like Moffat light. It felt like um, things that Moffat would do, but not done by him. And um, yeah, I don't know. There, yeah, it had it had moments. It had it, moments. It's unfortunate. With a little bit of polish, it could have been something special. With a little bit of polish, unfortunately. Apparently, a month wasn't enough time to polish a 45-minute episode of television. It uh, wasn't super... So, se- Series 6 made me angry. That was a weird one, because it had, like, for me, extremes ups and, up, extreme ups and downs. That So, I guess I don't mind the... All right. This is just is what it is. I don't mind that. Whereas, I, I didn't appreciate the... Okay, this is going to be like really exciting, but then this one is going to be like, uh, I suck. And maybe it's stuff like that that Moffat has just been gotten so burnt by that he's just like, I'm not going to even try that hard anymore. I'm not even going to try that, expect that much out of my writers. I'm just going to let it coast at the the mediocre level. Are you saying he has senioritis? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, he's that senior at us, and Frankie's that sophomore slump, and it doesn't work out. Well, no. <laughs> so, Frankie Boy's sophomore effort was better than his freshman effort, to be fair. Yes. And our next episode will be by Sarah Dollard, who gave us Face the Raven, which was pretty good. Yeah, okay. There we go. Let's see if, if he got it again this time. Anyway. Any, any, any hoozle. Do you have a hootoo, Matt? Oh, sorry, that's, that's right. not my line. <laughs> That's good. Yes. Uh, well, YouTubes. Um, we have from Adriana. Oh. That's quite the last name. A- Adriana. <laughs> like A-U-G-H-H-H. Orgerzanowska. Can I look? Yes. Oh, boy. That's Adriana is the good, easy part. Or... or- Okay, so we know that Auska is true. Zanowska. I'm going to say the J doesn't make the J in this case. I'm going to say it makes the Y. So we'll say Or Zanowska. How's that sound? Okay. I don't know. I have no idea. She's come up with a great animation of pictures. Um, it's called Running Through Time and Space. And it is a, a picture of... It has little animations from the 10th Doctor... Uh, or no, sorry, ninth Doctor running all the way to the the current. Um, the thirteenth Doctor. Thirteenth Doctor, yes. All thirteen. No, <laughs> it does not have uh, Sir John Hurt, but it does have the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth Doctors uh, illustrated. So it's it's a nice little fun, shorty short. I enjoyed it. You should too. Check it out. And that is it for Hootubes. Did we mention the Five Doctors Riff Tracks thing? No, we what? didn't. We should... uh, apparently Matt doesn't know about this either. What's going on? Well, uh, do, you, do you have a letter there that talks about it? Oh. <laughs> it's my Hogwarts letter. Don't mind me. Okay. Oh. 
We're going to try and see the five doctors and riff tracks. Can I come with you guys? Well, uh, as soon as tickets get we can do a, We can do a podcast about it we afterwards. Could. Yes, we could do that. But yeah, so the, the folks at Rift Tracks, who you may know as some of the folks on the Mystery Science Theater. Uh, have, the old one, not the new ones. Yes. Um, they, they got the rights to uh, broadcast live their movie riffing of The Five Doctors, which could be a lark. I would say it's, it would be quite a lark. Oh my gosh, those tickets are going to go like poop. Well, the pro- I, I mean, <laughs> Nobody wants to buy a poop, Matt. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think about this. When I went to look at the site and it said no tickets... I thought they weren't on sale yet. Maybe they're already all gone. Tickets, yes. Tickets go on sale April thirteenth, apparently. Which that was in the past. That was a week ago. So I just, I we missed their chance. Apparently, already. Well, no, no, no. Oh no. no. Let's let's. Well, not. okay, listeners, we're gonna we're gonna put together a Patreon <laughs> to figure out this out. Get us tickets <laughs> for this show. Give us your tickets now. It's important. We have a podcast. <laughs> Um, you know, if we miss our chance, then we're just we're just knuckleheads. No, there, there. I think there are tickets available. Oh, oh. Oh. Buy them right now. What are you doing? You have a computer. I will give you all of my money. <laughs> he's he's literally throwing money at him right now. <laughs> Ow, that hurts. So no, it's bills. No, don't throw a bill. I like bill. Oh, no, hey, bill. Oh. bill. Thunk. Damn it, little wild stallions. All right. Well, after this, we'll look at tickets. Oh, okay. We'll be better after this then. So make sure to to check us out on on. Check us out on our website, aotpodcast.com. They have links to um, our iTunes. <laughs> Mass <laughs> rushing to buy tickets. <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, yes. find us. You'll figure it out. It's fine. Go, go. It's all there. It's all there. Um, and then go ahead and check out our uh, – go ahead and rate us and comment us and say nice things on uh, iTunes and all that. Um, yeah, uh, that should be it. Stitcher, Stitcher, Flickr. Flickr. Twitter. Who cares? <laughs> Who too? Blog smart. Blog smart. Yes. <laughs> Blog smart. All right. Well, let's get some tickets. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been Gabe. I've been Matt. I've been Joseph. And this has been the Arrow of Time. <laughs> Hey everybody, we ended up getting tickets to the Five Doctors on the Riff Tracks. Woo, we're going to see it and be knowledgeable. At least one more episode of this here podcast. Yes. Is that what you think, Gabe? Sure.